Welcome to this Global Positive Health Institute podcast that focuses on positive psychology and lifestyle medicine. I'm Simon Matthews. I'm the secretary of the GPHI and also on the board of directors. And I am absolutely delighted to be joined today by Dr. Elaine O'Brien. Elaine and I have been having a, a lovely conversation just before we uh, we hit the record button. Uh, Elaine uh, is a uh, uh, Elaine is a walking masterclass in uh, in <laughs> flourishing through the health span. Um, she's one of the first 100 people to have completed a Master's in Applied Positive Psychology with Professor Martin Seligman. She has devoted her lifetime to uh, a focus on movement and mood. Um, she was a dance fitness instructor <laughs> in the late 1970s and early 1980s. And if you're, uh, if you're Australian like I am, that instantly, uh, instantly brings to mind Olivia Newton-John and Grease Pants. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whether you got around like that alone, um, but it's so lovely to uh, so lovely to uh, be here with you today. I am in awe of you. What a treat to get to meet you, and um, welcome to all our our viewers today. Um, thank you for inviting me. And yes, let's get physical. Really, <laughs> nice to me. so thank you, Australia, and uh, Olivia and John. Bless Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Um, Elaine, share share with us what got your attention here to start with. How did you how did you find yourself immersed in the world of positive psychology and lifestyle medicine? Thank you for asking that, I, Simon. I, I actually have an undergraduate degree in urban and outdoor recreation and psychology. So when I graduated from college in the seventies, I felt there was a good psychology. And what happened was um, I took a time out from doing a graduate work in um, psychology to teach dance fitness, as I said. And this program was composed of aerobic dance, flexibility, strength training, agility training, and social fitness to rhythmic music. So it, I could see people were really uplifted, especially when you combined positive um, emotion mm -hmm. and uh, good feedback and a loving relationship where people could come together, leave wanting more, feel like they're learning and they're moving with joy. So um, I thought that was really, really a positive thing. So I actually taught dance fitness for 40 years, as I said, up until the pandemic. And during that time, um, my dad had um, gotten pretty ill. His health span suddenly ended and he was in trouble, as he would say. And um, he had a terrible death. And I was really, really rattled by it. And I, I had my head in my hands literally one day and I saw this little brochure that said, learn positive psychology. Mm -hmm. And it was at a community college, Simon, where I had taught years ago and actually met Dan Tomasulo, Dr. Dan Tomasulo, who just wrote a great book about hope and brilliant psychologist. So um, I took this class at Brookdale Community College. I called the instructor and said, oh, come on down. And I just fell in love with it. And the first semester I took, I um, went to a uh, University of Warwick and I learned from Ed Diener and mm -hmm. Robert Biswas Diener and Antonella Della Fabi, some of the giants in positive psychology. I learned about the Penn program with Martin Seligman. And I took that in 2007, graduated with my uh, Master of Applied Positive Psychology degree mm -hmm. in 2008. And just learning about putting these practices to help us thrive and flourish and be well in the world and to do good in the world. Mm -hmm. It just was a dream come true for me. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And that was share, a long answer. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> fine. Like. Share, share with me, um, you know, you, you had this, you had this long career as a, uh, you know, dance and movement uh, instructor. You've, you've been passionate about, about, about that idea for a long time. And then you then you brought the science of positive psychology to that. Tell tell me about the marriage of those things and 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 the children that uh, that have been Aww. born of that union. <laughs> so um, in my doctoral work, I studied positive, active older women and fit dance. This positive uh, movement program that I had developed as a program to reduce the risk of alcoholism and drug abuse in mm -hmm. adults, particularly prescription drug abuse. And even more, I, in my mind, 
when I was invited to teach the program, it was around belonging. And I think that's really important that people belong and they have autonomy, right? That they have that determination and they have this mastery and these positive relationships. And this program just really culminated in that. So I think that another reason, um, well, that was because I could see the positive benefits mm -hmm. of the physical activity, right? And again, adding the social com fitness component. So we're we're boosting cognitive health, brain, right? Our brain health, our cardiovascular health. So all the systems are really doing well. And there's a great study um, around lifestyle medicine and just how um, fitness, like high fitness is, it's called smoke is is um, high fitness is a, a better risk factor than just some of these other factors like smoking and, and, mm -hmm. um, obesity and diabetes combined. And it was a cream con had written that. So just like learning about um, the physical and then the mental health. And in our, um, in the US it's national mental, mental health awareness month. And I think that's like a really big part of our, our work, right? As coaches and trainers mm -hmm. and trying to help people. But um, another reason just really quickly was I wanted to show Martin Seligman that that physical activity was just not like what he would call neck down activity, but that it was an integrated system of mind, body, mm -hmm. and even spirit that we can use our bodies as an aside to help other people, help others in the world, help our environment and uh -huh. our communities. Uh -huh. But so I you... think that I'm still working on Marty. I saw him yesterday, <laughs> but I'm still working on it. Um, so, so you've you've schooled you've schooled Professor Martin Seligman. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was actually um, invited to be the, the speaker, um, and I spoke on zesty aging for his 80th birthday celebration at the University of Pennsylvania MAP Summit last year. So it was like such an honor to have him in the audience. And of course, he asked me about sex. So it's just, <laughs> that's what Marty does in the most charming way as he's sitting next to his gorgeous and lovely wife, Mandy. So it's just like, it's such a family. And I think to me, the positive relationships are the main thing. Like MAP gave me a new life. Like at an older age, I have like such a family. I don't really have like a, um, like a nuclear family that much, you know, mm -hmm. because people passing and losses, mm -hmm. but um, this has been just such a, like a rich, and even to get to meet wonderful you and to hear about what you and your wife Lynn are going to be doing is just so inspiring, and aspirational. So thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks, Elaine. And tell me if you were to, so, so given, given all that you have learned, all that you have experienced, if you were to share with physicians and health professionals one thing that you would want them to do to look after their own health and well-being what would that be okay this is going to be a little bit radical but <laughs> what i would say that the best thing that they can do for themselves is again self-care is obvious and to care for their staff and teams mm -hmm. i think it's really important to give training and education and loving care to the people that work for you so that they can serve and represent you as you um, are a person. Mm -hmm. I know um, I, this week I had two instances at medical offices where the staff really, like I, I'm, I try to be very um, objective, but as a scientist observant and also as a human feeling person, but um, just was treated really badly and then compared notes with my husband and he had a similar experience. Mm -hmm. So I think there's this lack of, um, like if we could pick up positive psychology to build positive human relationships, I think that would really help um, mm -hmm. his clients, mm -hmm. doctors would, and um, the patients and their families. Um, What's the passion, love, understanding, listening, mm -hmm to see people so that they matter, even for that snippet of time that you're mm. with them. Mm. Elaine, what's the, what's the positive psychology mechanism that's at play there? When I, when I show care and loving kindness for people around me and I get a benefit from it, what, what's going on? 
I mean, I think there's a reciprocity effect. I think it's a broaden and building like Barbara Fredrickson would talk about that, you know, that goodness, it just like, there's feelings of awe, right? So that even if we can um, sharpen that sense of like, you see somebody and what do you notice about them? That's mm -hmm. like amazing or different or good, or like just lovely that you can appreciate. I think mm -hmm. that goes a long way to give compliments, mm -hmm. catch people mm -hmm. something right. And to have appreciative feedback, like it be like the go-to as a mechanism instead of like that, you know, um, negativity bias that, you know, mm. we just mm. put our guard up. And we have a good reason to do that. I mean, we've, as a collective, you know, been through a lot, you know, with, with the COVID crisis mm. and now just like coming off it, I think that was just kind of working through a lot. So just, I mm. think that love kindness really does matter. And mm. I hope mm. we answered your question. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, you, and as always, your answer is uh, far more interesting than my question. So. <laughs> no, I don't know about that. But... <laughs> Elaine, um, what, let, let's, let's imagine that you, you, you could influence healthcare systems directly. What, what's, what's one thing that you would do to change healthcare systems 10 years from now? Oh, that's such a bold and big question. I mean, in terms of um, positive human relations training that people are people first, that we have to love mm -hmm. people. Uh, again, you don't know people's backgrounds or whatever, but I love um, Isaac Perlintensky's observations about the current medical system. He calls our drain. And I mm -hmm. believe it stands for D's, uh, it's deficit, it's reactive, it's arrogant, it's ignorant and it's negative. So mm -hmm. that's kind of like, mm -hmm. I mean, again, that's just a, one theory. And then he proposes a method of spec, which is strengths-based, positive, empowering, and community. Mm -hmm. I think that really speaks volumes to mm -hmm. kind of reset the, the ideas around what medical care can be in our mm -hmm. world today. And mm -hmm. Really, Love really it. profoundly connecting with the humanity of people first. Oh, yes. And again, like, here's an example. So dance fitness, community dance fitness, right, to reduce the risk of alcoholism. What we found in the study was that these active older people from 55 to 72 were like, they were autonomous. They were like doing really well. They were volunteers. They were contributing to society. They were just helping their families in profound ways. And it was uh, similar to the nun study where it was a homogenous group, but there were similarities between the people. And yet they just made such a positive difference in the world compared to people who were not in those kinds of classes. So I'll even use my mom as an example. What my mom did everything the opposite and she's had mental health issues her whole life, which is really, it's very, so hard as a as to see that happen as a you know loving daughter and just you know also to experience it and i i think that the bottom line is that when we build positive communities it really can help lift up people in really huge ways and i ran into two of my former students yesterday at, at this luncheon and the ladies thanked me because even though we haven't been dancing in a couple of years now the community of women still meets together every month and for a birthday club. So they have a celebration they'll go to, like have a drink or they'll meet and have a picnic or something. So they keep those social ties that we're finding are so important mm -hmm. to us in the world. Wonderful, wonderful. Elaine, uh, if I if I were to kind of uh, re reach over there down into your tool bag, which I'm sure is sitting right next to you, and I were to open up that tool bag, and pull out the book or resource that's sitting on the very top because it's the one you use all the time. What am I going to find there? Mm, I mean, I love, I'm a basic girl. I love the primer and positive psychology, Chris Peterson. I think it's a fabulous introduction to the science and the art of positive psychology. And he was one of the greatest instructors of my whole life. So I would say that to honor him and to just like, it's a great, book that you can learn about the strengths and just all the little different tenants. And then I'm going to give a plug for my book on uh, the power of play, optimize your joy potential, because I've been 
having my hands on it a lot. And we actually got a picture from Marty with the book yesterday, so cute. Um, and it's like that play matters. I think that, you know, um, I'm writing a book now at the power play at work. So I'm thinking about, you know, like those medical offices, if there's mm -hmm. some way, you know, it's so personal, like play is very personal to everybody and it's complex, but there are ways to build a play mindset where you are serious at work. And recently I met with a woman at Columbia University really briefly. She was saying she de developed a play program for a company that she works at and they love the idea, but they said, no, we can't call it play. It's not part of our culture. We can call it flow, but we can't call it play. So it's almost like play is a bad word. And again, mm -hmm. with the negativity bias in mind, play doesn't have as much of a balance of attraction of the seriousness it has in really helping our health mentally, mm -hmm. physically, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. So I, I would just say those are the two books that I would have right Wonderful. now. Wonderful. And if we uh, if we wanted to send our uh, listeners away, whoever they may be, um, perhaps physicians, perhaps health professionals, uh, perhaps people who are interested in and curious about lifestyle medicine and positive psychology, um, what would you what piece of advice would you send them away with right now? Um, I think that I would say that just feel all the love around you, and the, I have so much gratitude for all the health professionals and the hard work that they do to help save people's lives and to help to improve the quality of people's lives. So it's just to feel that, that deep love and on those really hard days to just like dig deep and just get out in nature, right? Take a breath of fresh air, be in awe of something amazing in the world and the mm -hmm. fact that you are making such a difference. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you, uh, thank you, Elaine. Um, thank you for joining me. To uh, it, it's, uh, it feels like we've been playing. It feels like oh. it's been a playful time. <laughs> so thank you for uh, thank you for the the joy and fun and and play you brought to uh, you brought to this discussion. Thank you also to our listeners and uh, GPHI followers. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you again at another one of our podcasts soon. Please be happy and well. And Elaine O'Brien, thank you so much for joining oh, me here today. What a treat. Thank you so much. Bye for now. <laughs>